magic and mythology of the crane. Cranes are large and majestic birds that are most easily identified by their long necks, long legs, large wings and streamlined bodies. There are currently 15 species of crane and they can be found throughout Eurasia, Africa and North America. Although they were once found in the UK, where they were much revered by the ancient Celts, they were hunted to extinction in the 17th century. Like us, cranes are opportunistic feeders and will eat not only fish and amphibians but also eggs of other birds, rodents and even grain and berries. They are monogamous and generally mate with the same partner year on year. Cranes build their nests as platforms on shallow water and usually lay two eggs at a time and get very territorial. Unusually in the bird world, the young will stay with their mother until the start of the next breeding season. Cranes are pretty noisy birds. They are very vocal and appear to have a distinct vocabulary. They also like to sing duets with their mating partner and are of course famous for their spectacular and elegant mating dances, which were copied by many ancient human cultures for their ritual aspect. In ancient Greece and Rome their dance was said to represent love and life. According to Plutarch, King Theseus, yes, he who killed the Minotaur, created a dance based on that of the cranes to symbolise the labyrinth. In northern Japan, the indigenous Ainu people performed a crane dance as part of their own rituals, while in Korea a crane dance has been performed at the Tongdasa temple since the 7th century. Cranes are also linked with war, martial arts and martial magic. In ancient Turkey, sultans would present crane feathers to their best warriors who performed heroically in battle. The soldiers would wear their then wear these feathers and their headgear as badges of honour. In Rome the crane was sacred to the god of war, Mars. In China several kung fu styles have been inspired by the graceful yet powerful movements of the crane, especially as it hunts, including the Wing Chun, Shaolin Five Animals and Hunga or Tiger Crane styles. In Celtic legend, in the second battle of Moitura, just as before the battle, the god Lu breaks into a magical chant while standing on one leg with his arm outstretched and one eye closed. This ritual position, called Korgrinach, or a crane killing, is based on the pose of a crane as it hunts for fish and is believed to, to enable anyone who takes it to essentially have one foot in this world and the other in the other world and perform a very powerful curse. In more recent times it has become associated with peace, non-violence and the innocent victims of war after Japanese schoolgirl Sadako Sasaki, who, dying of leukemia as a result of the fallout from the Hiroshima atomic bombing, vowed to create a thousand origami cranes before her death. You see, in Japanese culture there is an idea that anyone who creates a thousand origami cranes will be granted a wish by a crane, and her wish was for peace, for no more war in the world. In Greece and Rome, cranes were considered guardians or symbols of vigilance, as it was believed that cranes chose one of their number to stand guard while the rest slept. To make sure it didn't also succumb to sleep, the sentry would allegedly hold a stone in its claw that would fall and wake it up if it nodded off. This idea carried on well into medieval times when cranes were used as a heraldic symbol to represent watchfulness. A crane holding a stone is still the crest of Clan Crownston today, a clan which is said to take its name from the Gaelic for place of the cranes. In English, crane after the bird is still a well-known surname. Our modern concept of the family tree or pedigree was inspired by the form of the crane's feet and in fact the term pedigree derives from pied de grue or foot of the crane in French. Cranes are, all in likelihood, the oldest living species of bird. Fossil evidence for them, which looks very much like how they look today, dates back to around 10 million years. This is echoed in folklore and legend where cranes are considered ancient wise birds that symbolise longevity. In Asia they are said to live for a thousand years, and in Irish law a crane living on the island of Inniskea was said to have been there since the beginning of the world and would remain there until Judgment Day. Some crane species migrate while others do not. Where they do migrate, like other migratory birds, they were seen as travelling to the realm of the dead, and many believe that cranes either accompanied or transported the souls of the dead to the other world, or carried messages back and forth between the living and the dead. The crane was said to be one of the sacred animals of the Welsh Prince of Duffet, and one time guardian of the underworld, Pwyl, and a creature of transformation and regeneration. For many, the crane symbolises the journey of the shaman between realms. In the law of Scotland and Ireland, various women were turned into cranes as a form of punishment, usually out of jealousy, for promiscuity or having a bad temper. St Columba famously transformed a queen and her handmaid into cranes. Eva, the mistress of the son, go son of the Celtic god of the sea, Manannan, was changed into a crane because of the jealousy of another woman. She took refuge on Manannan's island, known today as the Isle of Man, for 200 years. After her death, Manannan made a magical and sacred bag from her skin, known as the Corbol, or crane sting bag, which he kept his most magical treasured possessions in. This crane skin bag features a lot in Irish law as it passed from Manannan to Lou and then on to the hero Finn McCool. 
Many modern druids honest this magical bag by having their own crane sting bag for their tools, which today is usually made of environmentally and vegan alternative, often with images of a crane to show its mythical or inspiration. In modern druidry, the crane is still a much revered animal, and is often a spirit animal for those who follow the path of the bard, obate or druid. Now, as in times past, druids practice augury or divination based on the flight of the crane, especially when looking to predict the weather. The shape of the cranes when in flight was said to have been one of the inspirations for the creation of the Irish Oum alphabet of the god of poetry and the sun, Ogma. Over in Greece and Rome, a similar tale was told about how the flying cranes inspired their alphabets, created by Hermes, Mercury or Apollo, depending on the version. As a result, cranes are closely associated with both mundane and magical writings of all kinds, and are often called upon by those who's, for whom writing is a big part of their life or career. The crane's plant allies include the pine, which is often depicted within Asian art, and the crane's bill, better known as the hardy geranium. It is ruled by the elements of air and water, and by the planet Mars. The crane is also associated with both the moon and the sun, for it was said that the crane was always the first bird to greet the sun each morning. What will you learn from the crane? Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.